morning everyone uh, first of all let me thank jodev sir for giving me this wonderful opportunity to chair this session the topic is peritoneal disease and diabetes a two way relationship as you all know peritoneal disease is a tissue breakdown the peritoneal tissue breakdown characterized by the loss of connective tissue uh, which leads to loss of alveolar bone and tooth mobility etc uh, patients with diabetes have been shown to have more incidence of peritonitis when compared to non diabetic individuals to present on this topic i invite dr sarida bajaj to the stage she is director professor and head of medicine mln medical college allahabad president south asian federation of endocrine societies president of wendy women in endocrinology and diabetes editor in chief esa manual of endocrinology second edition scientific chair rss di 2015 you have all heard about diabetic foot diabetic feet problems in um, which are very common which and um, foot is neglected no matter how much you say no we are looking at the feet very carefully but what about the mouth do we ever ask the patient to open the mouth and show us what is happening inside so i want to i want you to literally get used to this concept so is diabetes a foot and mouth disease so that is the thought that i want to leave you with now if we talk of the oral health related conditions which have been described with diabetes the most important is periodontal disease apart from what sandeep was just telling you a little bit of caries tooth loss polyps changes in bone formation increase in bone resorption then fungal infections or a lichen planus dryness of the mouth burning mouth syndrome and alterations in the taste so there is a big big spectrum of disorders that may be there and this is the difference if you open the mouth between a healthy gingiva and one which is affected with periodontal disease so we are not looking at from this from the dentist perspective but we are looking at what krishna was addressing earlier how systemic inflammation affects the uh, makes it all systemic now what is the connection it is considered to be the sixth complication of diabetes and it is frequently responsible for not only poor glycemic control but increasing cv risk as well now the pathogenesis we know what happens in diabetes the age formation deposition of collagen reduced blood flow to gingiva and lower resistance to bacteria and because of bacteremia there's toxin production catabolic cascade again inflammation leading to increased insulin resistance and hyperglycemia so this is the two hit hypothesis for accelerated periodontal destruction in patients with diabetes resulting in enhanced periodontal tissue breakdown again smoking is an aggravating factor and this sub gingival biofilm also contributes obesity also has a role to play we have the adipokines the age and the rage interaction up regulated cytokine production altered polymorphonucleoside function and altered apoptosis there are wide number of bacteria which are been attributed to the progression of periodontal infections viruses epstein barr virus and hsv are immunosuppressive and support the overgrowth of these perio pathogens now what would it look like if you actually got down to opening the patient's mouth i'll show you a couple of pictures which would make you aware of what periodontitis would look like so this is localized moderate gum disease this is moderate to severe periodontitis and this is severe periodontitis in a patient with a very high hba1c who did not respond to initial periodontal therapy this is very severe chronic anaerobic periodontal infection and this is just a gum boil in the setting of poorly controlled type 2 diabetes here you can see enlarged gingiva a gingival polyp and then we can have bone loss as well 
which would be well visible if you take an X-ray. Now, I said in the beginning, is it just mouth or foot? Or we can say, we can link the two. Patients who have more of periodontitis also have more of diabetic foot disease. Now, what are the mechanisms apart from altered host response, alterations in connective tissue, wound healing, microangiopathy, alterations in the gingival crevicular fluid, altered subgingival microflora, and perhaps a hereditary predisposition as well. Now, where did this concept come? Where did this concept come in initially? So we have a very large NANS data in which there are almost 10,000 non-diabetics who just completed a baseline dental examination and, had, and they had at least one follow-up evaluation over a decade. 47% had a periodontal index of zero, that means they were healthy. So there were five quintiles into which they were divided and the association of diabetes was assessed. Now the odds ratio in the first and second quintile were negative, but in the, the pockets in the third and the fourth and the fifth quintile were significant. So dentate participants with advanced tooth loss had an odds ratio of 1.7, which is significant relative to those with minimal tooth loss. So that is the largest study which established the association between periodontitis and the development of type 2 diabetes. So the risk of elevated HOMA IR increased by 30% across the quartiles and the periodontiles, periodontal status was only associated with insulin resistance among participants with a high WBC count or if they had raised CRP and you know CRP tells us about what? Underlying inflammation. Then another study which links atherosclerosis, that is we measure the intima media thickness. So if the intima media thickness was one millimeter or higher for severe periodontitis compared to that with moderate or, and that with no periodontitis. So there is underlying atherosclerosis as well. So these results provide the first indication that periodontitis may play a role in the pathogenesis of atheroma formation as well as cardiovascular events. Again, another study in which 50 carotid atheromas were study and studied and 44% contained at least one of those organisms which I told you earlier. So those were present in those atheromas. Again, what about mortality? I'm not just talking about diabetes. I'm talking of a cardiovascular risk. I'm talking of mortality, which was demonstrated in Pima Indians, that death rates from ischemic heart disease and nephropathy were higher with severe periodontal disease than in those with none, mild or moderate. So it may contribute to increased mortality associated with diabetes. Not only that, it is also associated as a risk factor for stroke and as well as carotid atherosclerosis. So these, in a nutshell, are all the studies which are telling us higher chances of proteinuria, a greater HbA1c, significant effect on death from cardiorenal disease. Again, more of proteinuria. I've already shown you the NANS data and incident diabetes mellitus was significantly associated with severe periodontitis. Now keeping this in mind, what we did, we studied 50 patients, this is, a, this is published in the IJEM, for oral manifestations and associated micro and macro vessel disease. So uh, amongst this group, the majority had periodontal disease some had oral candidiasis, tooth loss, the entire gamut of symptoms which I, which I told you about earlier. The fasting and the postprandial was significantly deranged in the patients compared to the controls. 
and if you look all the cases had more of neuropathy retinopathy the microangiopathies dyslipidemia sepsis as well as cv disease but we found that the association of oral manifestations in diabetes and microvascular complications were significant as far as neuropathy retinopathy and dyslipidemia were concerned so this is definitely important another question do women with gestational diabetes who have poor periodontal health do they have poorer glycemic control do we know anything about that and the other way around do pregnant women who have poor periodontal health have a greater risk for gdm so again a very very interesting question to answer unfortunately the studies that i'm telling you about here they have shown contradictory results so we don't know as of now if there is any link between gestational diabetes and periodontal disease but then this is good material to work on what about smoking again we are not well as we're not sure about the nexus between periodontal disease and type 1 diabetes but if there is a type 1 diabetic who is smoking then the chances of periodontitis increase tremendously so far so good or so bad however you would like to take it but if we treat periodontitis does the glycemic control improve now this is a meta analysis which showed us at least a 0.4% reduction in the hba1c which can be anticipated only following effective so yes it is as good as some of the drugs that are available out there today i would like to conclude by saying that i have shown you clearly that the association is bidirectional periodontitis is associated with several risk factors not only for diabetes but as well as diabetes complications treatment including antibiotics could lead to improvement in the hba1c but then we have to have more longitudinal data for that before we can make such broad statements what does ada in 2015 tell us about periodontal disease Number one, it is severe, but not necessarily more prevalent in patients with diabetes than in those without. It adversely affects diabetes outcomes, although evidence for treatment benefits remain controversial, and 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 they do recommend annual screening. So the association, uh, I'm sorry, this I think the slide has come uh, just duplicated. I'm so, oops I'm going backwards I'm sorry I'm just went backwards so that was my last slide this is um I would like to invite you for two major conferences which I'm organizing as scientific chair one is the Uttar Pradesh Diabetes Association meeting in Jim Corbett Park on the 10th and 11th of October and the national RSSDI which is coming to Uttar Pradesh Lucknow for the first time and please block your dates thank you very much I'll be glad to answer any questions Thank you, madam, for the wonderful presentation. Thank you. Now it is open for discussion. Any questions? Uh, impaired glu glucose tolerance and periodontal disease. A similar. And the similar. Identical. As, exactly. It's similar, but lesser, and not as significant as with frank diabetes. And what is the percentage of uh, involvement, uh, occurrence of stroke, myocardial infarction? Okay. Uh, uh, with the periodontal disease. So they, they, what they did, they studied the odds ratio. They didn't give any. They, the percentages are not given. The odds ratio is given, and the odds ratio was significant. I told you in the third, fourth, and fifth quintiles. So as the the periodontitis is becomes mo moderate to severe, the risk increases. The odds ratio is mentioned. There's not a percentage which you can calculate from that. more uh, cv events cardiovascular events as compared to strokes mm -hmm.